everyone, welcome to A Thanks World. What we're doing today is pancit. It's very popular here in the state. The protein is going to be chicken and I use this golden bihon and this is what I'm going to be using. It's a lot easier to work with. And one thing I would like to point out is that the broth is really important. But if you don't have the broth, you go and buy this at the big box store. This is something that is that can be used at any time and it's always there that's available. Also, what I use is this Filipino kind of soy sauce, but you can also use a soy sauce that, that can be found um, it, all over the store, Target, Walmart, or any of your supermarket. So what I have here is all the ingredients and also something that's different that I use than, than most people is I use pechai. Um, it has that a little bit of tang, bitter taste, not really bitter, but I kind of like it. So it's up to you. Um, you can just use cabbage, that's all. And also, if you can, you know, some people also use um, string beans. You can do that. It's up to you. These are all the uh, ingredients that I use. So let's get cooking. Let's prepare the broth. I'm using a rotisserie chicken. The drumsticks are usually overcooked and the meat is too tough, dry, and chewy. I include them in making the broth, but not in my pancit ingredients. What's nice about using this pre-made chicken is that it has been brined prior to cooking. Not only it is nicely seasoned, the meat is super moist too. I separate the skin from the meat to maximize the broth flavor. The bones add lots of savory richness to the broth and I carefully select only the best part of the meat. As you can see, I use all the parts that's in the back of the meat for part of the broth. And yes, I do use all that gelatinous goodness in the bottom of the container. There's a lot of amazing flavor there. You'll notice that I use mostly the breast meat, but don't worry, nothing will go to waste. After the broth has simmered for a long time, the tender meat in the pot and the leftover broth can be used for sopas. It is a favorite Filipino pasta soup. I'm using an eight quart pan. I filled it up half full of water. By the time I added the chicken into my pot, it's almost three quarters full. For seasoning, I only add onions, sliced onions and chicken bouillon. You can use salt if you wish, but keep in mind, I'm using a fully flavored uh, rotisserie chicken. I cover the pot and allow the broth to simmer for at least an hour. By the way, if you are using chicken stock, measure seven cups and bring the stock to a boil and season it to your taste. Keep the broth at simmer until you are ready to use it. Now preparing the vegetables for our pancit. I cut my carrots in small sticks or julienne slices. I then mince my garlic and um, Slice my onions thinly. I don't like big chunks of onions in my pancit. Yes, I do use my smasher to make my the mincing of my car my garlic a lot easier. I cut my cabbage in half and then I quarter it again and I remove that white portion. Uh, not, that white portion is not very pleasant to eat. And then I cut my cabbage in slivers. 
It looks like it's a lot, but we're going to be using all of them. And here's my pet chai. And I'm showing you how I removed the uh, white portion of the pet chai. I actually saved this white portion if, when I'm making milaga or um, sinigang. It's really good when I'm using that, but I don't use the white portion when making my ponsu. Rinse all these. Uh, leaves very nicely and make sure they're all clean and I roll it up and I cut them into slivers. It's important that um, the vegetables are cut, cut into uniform sizes for even um, cooking. The celeries are also cut diagonally. I use the green portion of it also because it gives it gives very nice flavoring for my pancit. I shred the chicken in bite-sized pieces and prior to cooking everything must all be prepared. Everything must all be in place. I am going to be using my three quart nonstick pan with high sides. It is so much easier to use than the stainless steel or the aluminum pans because of its nonstick quality. I also use canola oil because it has a neutral flavor. Don't use too much. Um, use only in a amount, uh, the right amount to cover the bottom of the pan. Sure. Wait until the oil is hot. As you can see, I'm using a chopstick to figure out if the oil is hot and the end of the tip usually sizzles when the oil is ready. So I start with the sliced onions first. And then when the onions are tender, I add the, car the garlic and uh, cook them until all our aromatics are all beautifully cooked and smelling really, really good. The shredded chicken is added next and combined with the garlic and the onion. And what I do is I add two tablespoons of soy sauce to season and also this, the soy sauce adds color to the chicken. When I add the soy sauce, I make sure that all of the chicken are nicely covered, evenly covered, so that not some are pale. Just make sure that you, you stir it really well so that it, it's all incorporated best. The carrots and celery take about the same time to cook, so they're added next. And when you're adding vegetables to, to your stir fry, this is what, you, what I'm doing. I'm actually stir frying all of the vegetables. Um, I need to add broth to the mixture to keep everything moist. That's about half a cup of um, broth. Don't use too much because we don't want to make soup. It's enough broth so everything stays moist. And I use two utensils to stir for even cooking. And when the carrots are and celery are wilted, I add the pet chai and the cabbage. This is going to look like it's a lot of vegetables, but don't worry, everything is all going to be perfect. And of course, we've added more veggies, so what do we do? We have to add more broth. And at this point, 
there you should be tasting your mixture to make sure that everything has enough seasoning taste and add pepper if you need pepper or any kind of other um you know i am adding one teaspoon of bouillon here mix oh yes and soy sauce don't forget mix and taste So the veggies are cooked, so I transfer them into a bowl. I'm going to be using the same pan to cook the pancit noodles. That's why I love this pan. It's like, it's something that I use all the time. I have several others, but this is my favorite. The broth, I've been keeping it hot this whole time. It's been on simmer because I like to add hot broth into my pan because adding cold broth into the pan that's been hot, it's a sure way of ruining your pan and these pans aren't cheap. So anyway, um, add about seven cups of chicken broth. And to the broth, yes, we are going to add um, more seasoning. And I like to add just a couple of um, tablespoons of, of soy sauce to, to give color to our pancit. If you don't do this, um, your pancit will be really pale. That's okay if you don't mind it, but it just adds a little bit of color to the pancit. And um, Right here it says chicken bouillon, that's actually pepper. So I only add the pepper and at this point I taste my, my broth to make sure that everything is well seasoned. Even if it's a little bit um, salty, it's okay because the noodles will need it. These noodles do not have any kind of seasoning, so your seasoning has to be perfect. Uh, you know, as you notice, the broth was at a boil when after I add before I added the noodles. I noticed that I did not soak my noodles in water, as other recipes suggest. Pancit is a lot tastier when cooked in broth. It takes a lot more work, but it is so worth it. You have to keep flipping the pieces, or even cooking and the absorption of the broth. The noodles will soften as you can see, but you just keep flipping them for um, so that they're evenly heated on each side. And I use the I use these ladles to just separate them. The noodles will soften and will so soon separate. Just gently pull them apart and eventually the noodles will cook and absorb that tasty broth. As you can see, everything is, is working out. Uh, don't turn up your heat so high that the broth is absorbed too soon before the uh, noodles are cooked. This isn't very hard. It looks like it's a lot of work, but it isn't. Now it's ready. It's time to add that wonderful chicken and veggies to our pancit. Usually I mix in two thirds of the mixture and save the rest for the toppings. Okay, we have to continue stirring after this and see all that um, broth that left, left over from the toppings. I just include it with the pancit and it's all good. So continue stirring and before you know it, you'll be done. This is a lot of pancit. I would bet that if you bring some of this to your 
next office party, it will be a hit and everyone will be asking for your recipe. Just tell them to, vi to visit a thanks world and to get it. It's time to play and of course to taste our pancit. This is probably a lot of carbs, but who cares? This is so good and yummy. By the way, I had to make a second batch because I had so much leftover ingredients. I gave away two trays to my son and he took a tray to his office. Yep, you guessed it. The office mates loved it. Ooh, let's not forget the toppings over there on top. We'll have to add more to it. Uh, all that goodness we have to add to the plate. And this doesn't this look so delicious? I hope you love this recipe and love us back. Subscribe to Thanks World. Tell your friends all about it. And let's get ready to eat. Look at that. Oh, that is so yummy. Um, we usually don't eat that much, but here it is. Love it. So here we are. We're finished with cooking our pancit today. I hope you like our recipe and subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you next time.